Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' H Farm Toys and the Diecast Lab. In this episode of How It's Made, we're going to go through step by step how this retro 1980s style farm layout was made. A quick footnote before we get started. All, everything I'm going to describe about this layout here is just a general overview. If you want specifics and step-by-step -step lessons on how to make this exact layout, join DieCastLab.com. That's where I have every lesson. I filmed the entire process and then broke it down into chunks so anyone, whether you have a lot of skill or no skill, you can follow along and make a layout just as you've seen here. Or you can take those skills and apply them to make an entirely different layout as those skills are transferable. Even many of the builds here you see may not be these specific builds, but end dump trucks and how to make uh, custom trucks of all sorts. Also, diecastlab.com is where you can find all that in step-by-step -step lessons. If you're not from Kansas, this would be a typical scene in the 80s, actually even now, present day, where the har farmers are just now, they're beginning to open up the fields. You know, harvest is just beginning. The harvesters are arriving in a central location or a place where they can park all their equipment just as you see and they're going to unload and then harvest is going to turn loose. In a lot of different towns you would see scenes just like this in rural elevators, fairgrounds, different places where there's a lot of area and local officials allow the harvesters to park their equipment until they're ready to leave in a few weeks. So this is kind of what I had in my imagination. If you're familiar with Kansas, I was thinking of someplace west of Great Bend and along K96. This would be a page right out of that book uh, as to what you would see. A little bit about the layout itself. The layout um, is four by six feet. This is styrofoam board. I bought it at a local hardware store. You can buy this at any hardware store in the insulation section. The white gravel you see is actually gravel from underneath my building. My building is setting on crushed concrete, so I sifted some of the fines out. I laid gray house paint down and then sifted the fines over top of the gray house paint, and that's how it sticks to the board. Same way down here in the grass, that's brown house paint. It was just a uh, mist tint at the local hardware store. I bought it for five bucks for the quart, and then I sprinkled, or once it was dry, I put static grass on top of the Gorilla Glue. This is uh, a medium and a dark four millimeter static grass mixed together. In the road ditch is seven millimeter static grass. Uh, just to give it a little more length, this is supposed to represent something that's been mowed in preparation for the harvesters arriving. The blacktop I'm particularly excited about because it exceeded my expectations. I really didn't plan on it turning out the way it did and I really loved the result. So basically what I did here, I took foam board left over from one of my kids' science projects. I cut that to the size I wanted to make it look like a typical highway width here in Kansas and then I sprayed black textured spray paint on top of that. It does have a rough texture but not too rough. It's really kind of cool and it looks just like any kind of blacktop out here in western Kansas. The wheat field right here, if I didn't mention it, is four millimeter and seven millimeter uh, dried grass. Uh, so that's static grass. Total cost of materials just to build the layout is less than a hundred dollars. That does not include the custom building, which is repurposed from another layout I have. Uh, and it does not include the scale, which is 3D printed, nor the probe, which actually isn't even period correct because you wouldn't have had a hydraulic probe at this point in history. You would have had a teenager with one of the brass probes out there sticking it in the wheat uh, standing on the dock. The elevator over there where the truck is dumping is masonite along with the backdrop is also masonite and the silos are PVC pipe with a one by two on top of it glued down. And then the windows, I found an image online, copied it and pasted it into Microsoft Publisher and then made the decals right here at my house. As for the machinery, we'll start with the newest additions to uh, my collection here. What you see here is a pair of 3D printed L2s and a pair of M2s. These were bought from AccuScale Custom Farm Toys. I actually bought this one assembled and then these three are kits I had purchased previously. I ended up buying this one because I wanted to make sure I was putting the rest of them together correctly. I paid $2.25 for this one and that was from AccuScale Farm Toys and then I bought the kits separately. A couple of things about the gleaners. 
One, basically the only th parts that move are the feeder house does raise up and down, the flaps uh, will flip, flip up, the bubble up auger does raise, and then the unloading tube will swing out. Other than that, the wheels are in a fixed position, which doesn't bother me because this is just going to stay here. I'm not going to actually play with any of this. I might move it around, but that's all I'm going to do with it. Um, this was staged this way as uh, the farmer is opening up his field, and then we have another one coming into the field, and then the two following it behind. You'll notice on the layout here, you're going to say, Eric, that's not a very big wheat field. Why not? Well, because I wanted to stage everything just as you see it here, as these guys are coming down the road and then they're opening up the field. Now this is left to the imagination to make the field or appear bigger when it actually isn't. So for the purpose that and the staging that I have it, it works just perfectly. As for the trucks in this particular layout, this is a diecast promotion C65. This was just released December of 2020. The hoods open up which is really cool and the beds raise. This is a 16 foot bed on this tandem which I don't particularly care for but hey we have a good looking tandem and that's awesome. These are $65 online. This is a Neo, now an Advantage Diecast C65. This came with a flat bed and single axle configuration. I went ahead and put my own 3D printed bed. This is a 16 footer just like you see on the tandem. This is for sale in my uh, online store at rockinhfarmtoys.com. There are two other Neos following that coming down the road and uh, they go with these combines. This C60 right here is a green light C60. I actually bought a couple of these for the wheels just so I could make another tandem. This has a 16 foot stake type bed along with a hoist. All of that can be purchased in the Rock and H store as well. This was actually a Coke truck. Uh, that I used acetone to wipe the logo off because I really like the white and the red together for this period of time. This looks really cool. So uh, just wipe that logo off the Coke truck. Next in order of purchase history, this is the John Deere crew. I've had these uh, for a few years now. These were actually Ertl, 8, Ertl 7720s that were rebadged 8820. I bought the uh, decals from Boston Implement and I believe I paid like a dollar or two dollars for the 8820 decals and then these originally 7720s uh, I think I gave like 25 bucks a piece for them at one point these are getting harder to find at least the yellow top ones there's some green top ones out if you'd rather have that uh, variety or that version of combine you'll notice these are pretty dusty because well they've been sitting here in the lab quite a while other than the decals these are stock Behind it is a Donahue combine trailer. A friend and I, we teamed up and had this 3D printed. This is for sale in the Rock and H store. Um, I had a, a vintage Donahue combine trailer brochure and the measurements were basically there so we just had our designer make it from what we saw in the brochure. These Brigadiers, I found these all over eBay paying anywhere from $20 to about $35 for them and in various states of repair. Some were brand new, some had been played with or used and they also feature a 16 foot stake type bed. You'll notice a little something different about this bed. One, it's painted a different color, but two, this one which I showed you just a minute ago does not have the 12 inch extension which was an option for this particular bed and this one does. So this one has the 12 inch extension while the other one doesn't. These are setting on top shelf replicas Ford frames, the L9000. At one time you could buy those for like 10 bucks or $15 a piece and I'd bought cases of them just to reuse the frames and the wheels because I liked the style of wheels they had. A really great looking wheel for the time and then the frames made it perfect to put these C65 or these Brigadiers on. One thing about the Brigadiers though, if you're buying the diecast version, these are 160th scale, not 164th. So they are just a little bit bigger than, um, what else, than everything else on the board. Some of these have handmade bumpers, some of them don't. The fuel tanks here are 3D printed and these are also for sale in the Rock and H store. This older Brigadier here I got from a guy uh, in a trade of some sort. I've had this for a very long time. It, doesn't even have cab glass. It is die cast. I don't even know what brand that is. It's setting on a die cast promotions frame that was been stretched out long ago. It's got die cast round tanks and then a handmade 
bed out of styrene. This is board and batten, if you know what that is, and then some 3D accessories. One thing uh, I added to all of these trucks here is the exhaust, which is just aluminum pipe with, in a pipe. And that's how I made the exhaust on all five of these trucks. Next, we have a crew of New Hollands arriving to this yard. These really aren't period correct. I think these are 90s models, 90s vintage combines. I don't recall, but they're TR-97s and some 98s. They are on the layout because I think they look cool. And someday, if I ever get Massey Ferguson's, I'll go ahead and put Massey's out here. But until then, the TRs are going to stay. Uh, the combine trailers, these are prior to my 3D printed version over there. These are all handmade out of brass. Um, they're actually a little smaller than the, than the Donahue's. Nevertheless, um, those stay because I handmade them. The trucks pulling those, these are International S-Series trucks. These are Ertles. You'll notice something similar between these and the Brigadiers is they're setting on the same L9000 uh, top shelf replica frame that's been stretched out. This is an MA22 bed which is for sale in my store. It features a diamond logo. Uh, this print sheet is all actually available uh, for subscribers to the Diecast Lab. You can download this and print these as you wish, the diamond decals. A couple of other models that I put out here on layout. This is a replica of my grandfather's C60 Chevrolet. I spent many a summer delivering wheat in Gorham, Ellis, and Russell, Kansas. Just a lot of memories of this, so I had, uh, had to make a replica of it. Little funny story about this. Uh, you might be wondering what this is up here. He didn't have rollover tarps on either one of his trucks, so he had a 2x6 uh, in the stakes up here at the top, and then if you recall what plaster and lath is, he took the lath and nailed it to that 2x6, and they were like an inch space or something. And then that was to break up the wind, so as he's going down the road, he wouldn't lose wheat, or maybe as much wheat. Anyways, had to include that detail on Grandpa's truck. Had this old International Paystar out here. Uh, just got it out there because it looks kind of cool. This is a client rig, a replica, and it just really fits this scene so well because it's a 359. And then we have this C60 Chevrolet. This is a diecast promotions truck. Uh, the reason it's out here is I did an experiment where I put an aftermarket 18-foot bed without uh, altering the stock uh, mounting frame and the rest of the working components of the truck. So uh, there's actually a video and you can find it right here on my channel on how to take an 18-foot bed and mount it to uh, a stock truck without a whole lot of effort. It's kind of cool. Over here we have a vintage truck unloading in the elevator. Uh, this is another diecast promotions truck that I wanted to practice putting a longer bed on just for fun. So I stretched it out and put a 22-foot bed on it. Finally, we have our IH crew. This is 31480s that started out as International 1460s. This was a number of years ago already where you could buy 1460s for like $15 a piece. They were really, really cheap and it was awesome. Well, I didn't want a 1460 in my crew. I wanted 1480s. So, again, going to Boston Implement, I could get decals and take the old ones off and put new ones on. Job done. I did go ahead and add slightly bigger tires to it. These came from Moore's Farm Toys. What sizes are they? I can't tell you. I emailed Jeff and said, I need tires for these 1480s. He asked me, what size do you want? I said, I don't know. Send me some that look good on a 1480. So that's what I ended up with there. Painted the wheels IH white. They're setting on A-frame combine trailers. I actually saw this combine trailer in Kiowa, Kansas on the south side of town, on the west side of the road. There's a whole bunch of these for sale from years gone by. Somebody quit using this trailer. They were tandem axle down in Kiowa. Anyways, uh, driving by, I told my wife to stop so we could take pictures and get some measurements. And then I basically replicated that trailer from this axle forward. Uh, this is a rough design. These are all three, uh, excuse me, these are handmade out of brass. The trucks are die cast promotions, IH cab overs. You can't actually buy this color scheme anymore. This is an old color scheme that's been retired for some time. Uh, I bought, I made these probably six or seven years ago. Uh, so anyways, you can't buy these anymore. I did swap out the rear wheels for two whole buds because I like that for this era of truck better. Left the chromes on the front. The, everything else is stock except for I did stretch out the frame and put this six, a 20 foot box on it. 
If I had to do it over again and put a 22 foot box versus the 20 on it, I think it'd look a little better uh, than the 20, even though it's not that much longer. The end gate does come out, uh, so you can slide the header in. Back in the day, this is the way they would haul their headers a lot of times. These are 30 foot heads off of a case tractor that I had picked up at a toy show somewhere, and they, in a bargain bin, I picked up whatever he had and uh, bought them for a song and stuck them in the back so you'd have a 30 foot header for the 14, 6, 1480. I've got a, an S series four door here. This is two Ertl trucks married together and then the service bed is for sale in my store. That is a replica of a bed on Frederick Harvesting's crew, if you're familiar with Frederick Harvesting. Finally, the Freightliner back here is a CL150. That is a 3D printed cab from Truck and Little. It's a day cab version, and I bought the sleeper from King's Custom Farm Toys online and put those two together to make a replica of another truck for a guy here in Kansas. I like the color scheme and everything so well that I made one for myself, so uh, that is the second one that I made and I kept. The decals I printed here in house, I had a graphic artist do the artwork for me and then I resized them and stuck them on there. The whole thing setting on a diecast promotions frame so it matches up to the trailer it's pulling very well. If you have any other questions about things you've seen here, don't hesitate to ask. Leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to share with you what I know. Thanks for joining me on this episode of How It's Made. I hope you enjoyed it. Quick reminder, if you want to learn step-by-step -step how to make a layout like this, join the Diecast Lab. That will have the videos you need to have confidence to make a layout just like this or take those skills and do other things with them. If you like what you've seen here, tell a friend. See you in the next video.